green screen was a better investment than college. Hello, everybody. As you well know, I hate conspiracies. I hate conspiracies so much that they're the only thing I talk about. But apparently I'm not the only one because I found round about a million other people who also hate conspiracies. And in my time breaking down terrible conspiracy TikToks, I've gotten one, that's two. I've gotten one overwhelming request. And that has been to make YouTube videos, because apparently listening to my voice for three minutes is not enough for you people. And I've actually promised to make YouTube videos in the past, I just never did. That is partly because I'm a bad person, and mostly because I was depressed. But I feel like it's high time I grab this bull by the horns and turn this channel into something. As some of you may know, the other day on TikTok, I discussed a video of a man who was a proponent of the theory that ancient Egyptians colonized North America. Yeah. Look, I don't know, I have no fucking idea. The gentleman who made this video was not all that thrilled with my response, probably because I was a bit of a prick. What if I told you guys that part of the ancient Egyptian empire was in the America? Then I'd say you're full of shit. But I'm also gonna be a bit of a prick when you try to convince me that the Grand Canyon, which we know the geology of extensively, was a goddamn pyramid built by ancient Egyptians. And in the discussion he was having with many of you in the comments section of that video, there was one overarching theme, and that was to check out his YouTube channel, dog. So I decided to take one for the team, and I watched all 12 minutes of his Melted Buildings Theory YouTube video multiple times. So ladies and gentlemen, after extensive emotional stress and psychological torment, it is my great pleasure to present to you Melted Buildings Theory Debunked. Today we're going to be talking about something that's a little bizarre. This is known as the Melted Buildings Theory. This theory states that many of our national parks, mountains, big old rocks, canyons, are not really mountains, rocks, and canyons at all, but ancient cities that were destroyed in some kind of cataclysmic heating event. Well, that sounds absolutely fascinating. That would completely change the world of geology as we know it. <laughs> that would completely rock the world of geology. One of these mountains is just a natural formation, and the other one is a pyramid structure built by human hands. I want you guys to guess which is which. If you guys guessed the one on the left that is known as Gebel Dist, you are wrong. That apparently, according to them, is a natural formation. Oh, we got them, we got them. Everyone fill the them out on your conspiracy theory bingo cards. I am curious who you mean by them. Do you mean archaeologists? Do you mean anthropologists? Do you mean geologists? Or do you mean people who disagree, disagree with you? But the one on the right is an actual pyramid. It's an actual pyramid known as Pyramid of Amen. What? I can't even pronounce that. I'm butchering it. So this pyramid is also known as the Black Pyramid due to the coloration of the mud brick which it was built out of. And the reason that the Black Pyramid doesn't look like a pyramid anymore is because it sucks. This is a lot like trying to use a potato battery from a third grade science fair project as an explanation for how a Tesla works. Anyway, the Black Pyramid was built in 1850 BCE. Ironically, Amenemat, the ruler who this pyramid was built for, was known as Amenemat the Mighty and Perfect. The pyramid begs to differ. So what's going on here? Why does the pyramid look like this? They decided to give it an absolutely terrible building location. Located very close to the Nile River, the Black Pyramid was actually affected by their seasonal flooding, which you can imagine when a pyramid is made out of mud brick is kind of a problem. In fact, I even read somewhere that it was actually recorded that it was flooding during construction, which... You'd think that at that point you'd maybe think, M I don't know, let's move the pyramid or not do this. It kind of reminds me of that thing from Monty Python with the burned down, fell over, and then sank into the swamp. That burned down, fell over, then sank into the swamp. Yeah, that, that one. You know the one I'm talking about. I'm not one for impressions, in case you couldn't tell. The other reason why the Black Pyramid looks like this is because they decided to put too many rooms in it. Which, when you're building a gigantic pile of anything, it's kind of a bad idea to just leave negative space in the middle. But that's what they did. Amenemot decided that it was necessary to have room for not only him, but his wives, and all of the other shit that they wanted to bring with them to the great beyond. So they pretty much made a gigantic, heavy, hollow pile of bricks next to a river that floods it all the goddamn time. And then, to make matters worse, inside of the already way too many rooms, they didn't have enough internal structural support. So as they were building it, the slabs of stone that supported the ceilings began to crack. By the time it was done, the Black Pyramid was already collapsing, and this was almost 4,000 years ago. They tried to reinforce it from the inside with cedar trusses, which bought them some time, but after the pyramid was completed, they decided to abandon the project and build a new one due to the complete lack of structural integrity. In the world of archaeology, the Black Pyramid is the world's first OSHA violation. Not sponsored. I wish. Can you imagine? 
I wish I could go to my family and be like, yeah, I got a sponsorship from OSHA. My point is that something doesn't have to look like a pyramid for it to be a pyramid. The reason it doesn't look like a pyramid is because it sucks. But no matter how much it has fallen apart or deteriorated, this is still a pyramid. It just looks too crazy and too like symmetrical to be a natural formation. I mean, that's kind of the core of everything you're saying, isn't it? Is that it looks too crazy. There's no further proof than just how it looks. We've just seen that the actual pyramid you showed no longer looks like a pyramid, but it's still a pyramid. Your mountain, on the other hand, looks like a pyramid, but it's still a mountain. This mountain, Gebel Dist, is part of the Bahariya formation in Egypt. It is a natural sedimentary stone feature that was not built by humans. And also, if you insist on your pyramids looking like pyramids, this one doesn't look like a pyramid. It's round. At least the black pyramid still sort of has a square bottom. We know that this is a sedimentary formation not only because, I mean, look at it, but also because it's got fossils and stuff in it. Like, th this is, this is a sedimentary feature. I'm gonna talk about the possible explanation as what caused this cataclysmic event. You have not given us any proof that this event actually happened. So as it stands right now, you are trying to provide support for a completely evidenceless theory. But, for the sake of argument, let's hear it out anyway. Lichtenberg figures are often associated with progressive deterioration of high voltage components and equipment. Here he is going to notice a visual similarity between the Lichtenberg figure and some geologic features. So let's take a look at his video example and then his further explanation. An electrical current is sent through that wood, forming these miniature little canyons, forming this uh, electrical scarring-like pattern on the wood. So here's an example of the Lichtenberg figure. Don't call that a Lichtenberg figure because it isn't. As you accidentally were correct about, this is a canyon. It appears to have been dammed and flooded, but it is still a canyon. This is a result of erosion, not a result of an electrical current. So much of this theory relies on you just saying something. You gave an example of a Lichtenberg figure, showed something that looked like it, and said this is a Lichtenberg figure. You have given no evidence for how this is a Lichtenberg figure, you just said it is. And when your only proof is your word, I am going to call your bluff. This is, believe it or not, the Grand Canyon from Plain View. Well, hot damn, that is the first thing you've said that I do believe. Lichtenberg figure, it appears to be as if some kind of mega lightning bolt struck the ground, causing this canyon. Again with the word appears. Honestly, you guys can mark that one on your conspiracy theory bingo cards as well. All you have to go off is that these two things look similar. They are not the results of the same process. Again, these are canyons caused by rain runoff and erosion. And also, for the love of God, pick an easier target if you're gonna do this, because the Grand Canyon is arguably the most studied geologic feature in the world. We know exactly how this thing formed, and there are thousands of sources which all support this same idea. So rather than just saying, oh, it looks like a Lichtenberg figure, why don't you show me the evidence of electrical current? Why don't you show me the evidence of rock being melted here? Why don't you show me the evidence of anything other than just saying this is how it looks and therefore it is fact? Here's another example in New Mexico. Here is more in Saudi Arabia, Canada, more fractal patterns. It's as if the entire world in our distant past got fried and absolutely destroyed. It's as if in our distant past, the whole world experienced rain. It is absolutely amazing how you sell these conspiracies. You point out something which looks like something else and then completely disregard the processes by which one of them was made while doing an unbelievable amount of research into the processes of the other. You then decide to just apply that process to both. You do a damn good job explaining a Lichtenberg figure in this video, but you don't do anything to explain how canyons are made. Which you'd think when you're making a video concerning canyons, you would have done some research into it. Then after you've made your baseless connection, you go on to show a bunch of examples of the latter under the guise that your initial claim is fact. In place of facts, you just show a bunch of photos, attempting to convince your audience that what you are saying is the truth without having to provide a single piece of evidence. And one of the first examples for the melted buildings theory I want to talk about is the Grand Canyon. Dear Lord, give me strength. Who activated the fucking Alexa in my living room? There's just a very faint beat coming through my floor now. God damn it, Cully. Now, if you pay close attention to some of the mountains in the Grand Canyons, they don't really look like mountains at all, but pyramid-like structures. Again, with the they don't look like, that is not evidence of jack shit. The only evidence you have that this is a pyramid is that it looks vaguely pyramidal, and that, as you go on to say, it has 90-degree angles, which, as you can kind of see, it really doesn't. You can literally see very similar angles on the sides of the canyon 
in the very same picture. On top of that, I know you guys already know this shit, I'm preaching to the choir here, but look at the layering. You can see the same layers of stratigraphy inside of this pyramid that you can on the walls of the canyon around it. In fact, it's even capped with a piece of the white coconino sandstone, which you can see very, very clearly on all of the canyon walls in the background. It legit looks like an actual structure. I mean, you got 90 degree angles, you got pyramid-like structures. There's actually something in the Grand Canyon called the Isis Temple, and you can see 90 degree angles. It legit looks like a pyramid that was destroyed in some kind of cataclysmic event. Well, they did a shit job of destroying it if it still looks like a pyramid. You actually showed a destroyed pyramid in this video, and you didn't use it to support your claim? Come on, that is low-hanging fruit. You could have just said, like, oh, they're lying about how old it is, and this is an evidence of an ancient thermonuclear detonation or some shit. At least then it's a real pyramid. But no, instead you decided to imply that it was a mountain, effectively throwing away your only piece of pyramidal evidence in this entire video. And while I'd say you really missed an opportunity to have some evidence, I guess that's kind of how you roll. Okay, I know that all of you already know that this isn't a pyramid, but let me just give you a quick, concise list of reasons why it isn't. I never thought I was going to have to say any of these words while talking about a mountain, but here we go. The stratigraphy matches the surrounding canyon. Again, you decided to use one of the most studied geologic features in the entire world as evidence for your weird conspiracy. Kind of a mistake to choose a location that we know more about than like, Montana. Number two, why does this pyramid not have any rooms, doors, windows, entrances, or really any sort of feature that makes it look like a pyramid? Did they decide to just build a gigantic triangle of rocks with no purpose? Y y you, you are effectively implying that this pyramid is just the world's largest paperweight. Number three, why did they decide to build it at the bottom of a canyon? There is literally all of this flat land around it that is not in the bottom of a canyon. Do you have any idea how much work it would be to transport the necessary materials and manpower down the slopes of the Grand Canyon to build an entire pyramid. As you point out multiple times in your mud flood conspiracy videos, you are absolutely against the idea that humans would ever want to build on any sort of slope. And in those videos, you are talking about not ancient people, but people in like the 1800s. Oh, you know, people just back in the day just decided to build unleveled buildings. You express shock that San Francisco exists because there's buildings that are built on hills. Here's a building in San Francisco. Who builds buildings on unlevel ground like this? The ground's not even cleared. Talk to any engineer. So if you truly do believe that, then tell me how on God's green earth you believe that people decided to build a pyramid at the bottom of the Grand Canyon. God. Damn it! <laughs> Number four. Why does the bottom of this pyramid blend perfectly with the ground around it? Oh, as a matter of fact, why does this pyramid blend perfectly with all of the other mountains that are around it that you claim to not be pyramids? Well, you never say they aren't, I guess, so... Maybe you think everything in the Grand Canyon's a pyramid. I honestly wouldn't be surprised at this point. But how come this one looks like everything else around it and blends perfectly into the ground? Like seriously, if you were looking at this thing from above, you wouldn't even be able to tell which mountain you're talking about because everything looks exactly the same. There is nothing about this feature which makes it look more or less like a pyramid than all the other mountains around it. Which brings us to number five. If part of your criteria for whether or not something is a pyramid is that it needs to look like a pyramid, this one doesn't look like a fucking pyramid. Number six. And finally, there is zero evidence of megalithic pyramids, the size and scale of those found in ancient Egypt anywhere in Arizona. Well, yeah, that's the Grand Canyon. Now I want to look at Sion National Park. It legit looks like it used to be in ancient megalithic cities with like beautiful like structures that were destroyed. I hate to break it to you, dog, but you're just in awe of nature. Maybe put Zion National Park on your bucket list. I'm sure you'd get a kick out of it. Like, for example, there's this interesting pyramid-like structure in Zion National Park, and it looks very similar to temples found in India. <sighs> Looks like. But for the love of God, please just explain to me what an ancient Indian temple is doing in Utah. Yeah, I thought this video was about, like, Egypt. What What are you doing with India now? What the fuck is going on here? If you pay close attention to the structures in Zion and to the mountains, it has this interesting runoff pattern as if it melted and then froze. It's do you want to know why it looks like runoff? Because it's fucking runoff. This isn't what would happen if a building melted. This is what would happen if stone eroded. You're literally just explaining erosion and then just applying the definition to whatever other word you want. God damn it, dude. 
This video is good. I, this is my first video and I'm already having a mental breakdown. I'm halfway through my notes. What the fuck? How many points do I have? Is it like 30 something? Jesus Christ, I have 30 points. I'm on point 12. <laughs> it's, it's nine o'clock on a Thursday. Okay, let's let's do this. <laughs> All right, moving on. This is Rainbow Bridge in Utah. As you can see, it has this arch formation, and we're just told that it's from natural erosion, wind and rain, stuff like that. But it appears to be that it once was a bridge of some kind. Nope, but it is a bridge now. This is yet another erosion pattern that we know exactly how it was formed. There's hundreds of arches all over the place. I don't know what to tell you. Here's an interesting cave I found. Wow, that is an interesting cave. Thank you for sharing. Apparently this is a natural formation too, but it appears to be that the ceiling is like melting. <laughs> Why on earth would the inside of a cave have melted in a global heating event? If something on the surface was hot enough to do this to the inside of a cave, the whole surface of the earth would have been like fucking lava. <laughs> and let me tell you, there definitely would have been geologic evidence if that had happened. If you are saying that the inside of this cave melted from the same heat source that caused the other buildings to melt. I am I'm floored that there is anything left of those buildings. In fact, I'd be amazed if there's even mountains still standing in an event like that, because something hot enough to do this probably would have leveled the entire planet. We also know exactly what causes this, and actually, in a way, you're half right, because it is melting. This is an example of calcium bicarbonate buildup. It occurs when tiny amounts of calcium bicarbonate are deposited from dripping water from the top of a cave. It's the same thing which causes stalactites and stalagmites, which you can actually kind of see forming here. It is truly beyond me how you managed to pull up an image of arguably one of the most recognizable features of a cave and use it as evidence of a giant global superheating event wiping out the Egyptian colony of Arizona. And this looks like an interesting structure. This looks like melted. This looks like an interesting structure. This looks like as if it melted. Jesus. Yeah, it's in here too. Well, I'll get it. Give me a second. <sighs> the American fly swatter. This is an interesting structure. This looks like as if it melted. And some of these rock bridges and these pictures that you see are connecting one rock to another rock. It's as if in the ancient past these used to be buildings with the bridge connecting one building to another, kind of like this picture of a bridge connecting one building to another in Oxford, England. You literally just proved that these bridges are carved out of parent rock which still exists. Good lord. Here you can see the candle uh, wax dripping down, and here you can see the mountain having some kind of runoff pattern like the candle wax. It Again, these are two different processes that occur for two different reasons, yet yield visually similar results. Stop this. Imagine a city once existing there, an ancient city that possibly looked like Atlantis. Wait a second, where the fuck did you get Atlantis from? That's gonna be it for conspiracy theory bingo night. That Just fill out all your, all your squares for that one. Just fuck this. Jesus, that has gotta be like the conspiracy theory buzzword. When in doubt, just toss an Atlantis out there. God, what's this thing? A fucking Atlantis, dog. We're talking about the ancient Egyptian Indo colony of America, which was wiped out by a thermonuclear detonation, and this motherfucker's talking about Atlantis. You've compared this place to India, Egypt, Oxford, England. Where the hell did Atlantis come from? Stop just saying random shit. I hate my job. And mega lightning bolts came down from the heavens, tearing through the earth, destroying, frying, melting these buildings. And I'm gonna end this off by showing you one of the best absolute proofs of the melted buildings theory. All right, folks, here it is. This is the greatest absolute proof of the melted buildings theory. This is a mountain in Sharkala, Kazakhstan. Now, if you look at it, it looks like it used to be some kind of structure of some sort. It appears to have some kind of runoff pattern as if in the distant past, something melted off of it. That is a sedimentary rock butte with water runoff patterns. There is no way in any reality that that looks anything like a building. If you look at plain view and you look down, you can see these electrical discharge patterns that I've been talking about. Stop calling them electrical discharge patterns because they aren't. The reason they're both in the same place is because they were both caused by the same process. They are both erosion patterns caused by, you guessed it, <gasps> erosion. It's heading 
towards this mountain. It's creating these interesting like canyons. All around this mountain, you see these perfect, mysterious, spherical stones, and scientists aren't really able to give a perfect explanation. Yes, they are. These are called concretions, and they are a geologic feature which occur around sedimentary rock deposits. These features form inside sedimentary rock before it really becomes rock. They result as sediment such as clay, silt, mud, or sand begins to harden around a large kind of a host material. This can be something natural like a leaf or debris which has sunk to the bottom of the body of water, or it can be something like a pebble or larger stone. That inconsistency becomes an anchor point for sediment to be able to adhere to. As time goes on, this concretion becomes sort of a denser node within the sedimentary rock. Then as the rock around it forms, it is slightly more consistent, resulting in one very hard patch while the rest of the sedimentary rock is by and large rather soft. Throughout the course of geologic time, if this feature is then on dry land and subject to erosion, it can wash away the sedimentary rock and leave behind these concretions, which are more difficult to erode. In fact, even the image you show here indicates that these stones will eventually erode as well, just like their parent material. Obviously, this will just occur at a slower rate due to their density. The explanation for these spherical stones is these are actually remains of the glass and windows that once melted off this interesting like structure. This is one of the comments on the guy's video concerning these spherical stones around the mountain. I work with molten glass every day. Glass is made up of sand. The intense amount of heat turns the sand into a liquid. When the sand is liquefied, it automatically turns into neatly perfect spheres when cooled very quickly. I am not doubting that this guy does work with glass. And I am also not doubting that he probably knows more than me about it. So what I am going to say is that I've seen melted glass before and this sure as shit does not look like melted glass. And considering it is a common sedimentary rock feature at the base of a sedimentary rock mountain, I would say that there is a greater likelihood that it is not glass and that it is a concretion. Next to these spherical stones, you'll always find an interesting looking mountain. Do you want to know why? Because those buildings are the sedimentary parent material which the concretions have eroded out of. Here's another example. This is Bowling Ball Beach, California. Again, in the background, you can see us uh, the spherical stones. Man, these are also concretions. Are you implying here that the entire coastline of California was a skyscraper? I am at a loss for what any of this means. At the top right here, you see an interesting like brick pattern and then you have this runoff pattern. It looks as if it's sandstone because glass is made up of sand. This has to be a spoof. It looks like sandstone? How can you say it looks like what it is and then just do a full 180 and just say something completely wrong? These are aren't bricks. It is a sedimentary rock cliff. And those aren't windows, they are concretions. God damn it. <laughs> now being the curious person that I am, I wonder does the scriptures have anything to say about this? In Ezekiel 22, 21, ye I will gather you and blow upon you in the fire of my wrath and ye shall be melted in the midst thereof. I guess this has to be clearly stated. Scriptures are not scientific texts. This proves absolutely nothing. This is not a criticism or bash of religion or belief. It is merely the truth that this is not a context in which this can be used. We know exactly how all of these features were formed due to the diligent research of thousands of people over hundreds of years. People from different backgrounds, with different motivations, and different reasons for doing what they do. Because of this, we have been able to quite literally dig up the truth. If the only text you can find to support your theory is an ancient religious text, then that says a lot. So why am I so passionate about this? Why do I give a shit what this guy is saying on the internet? It's because when somebody does something like this, they undermine the field of science. Yes, it's stupid, it's funny to laugh at, and we can all sit here and be like, wow, what a goober. But in reality, when someone does this, it gives a voice and it gives justification for those who want to undermine the scientific process. And as we've unfortunately seen recently, when there is doubt in science, lives can be at stake. By letting something like this slide, we could be opening the door to allow something far more dangerous and sinister to slide as well. So while this conspiracy is chump change as far as conspiracies go, it is important to treat it as the camel's nose under the tent. If you let it slide, it won't be long before the entire camel is in there with you. This guy has recommended some of his other videos to me. I think next on my list is going to be the, uh, uh, mud flood theory and then I'm also gonna try and do some ancient alien stuff but really this is my first foray into YouTube and I want to be able to make this uh, a platform where I post longer more involved content um, that hopefully you guys will enjoy please let me know what you guys think about this um, let me know if you have any tips or pointers because again this is my very first video folks I'd like to thank you all very much for watching and I'd like to thank you again for your patience on me actually producing this video it was a blast to make I would like to give a massive thank you to my patrons for making this video possible you are helping me justify 
being able to pour this much time and energy into doing what I love. And for that, I am in your debt. You will all get a nice big credit screen at the end. So if you're one of my patrons, uh, you'll get your shout out at the end of this. I would like to thank you all for watching. Remember to stay curious, stay inquisitive, and most importantly, Atlantis.